Good evening and welcome to uh, Devotions on this Saturday evening in June. A uh, beautiful sunny day here in Bloomington Normal. Hope you've had a good day where you are. I wanted to continue this evening with uh, some of Anne, Labot Anne Lamott's book, Help Thanks Wow. Last time I read from this, it was sort of the intro to this idea of the three essential prayers. So this is part of the chapter on help. And it's good to note that this was published in 2012. But when you hear it, it sounds like maybe she's writing to the time we're in as well. Um, and I think maybe it's just uh, universal. She says, it is all hopeless. Even for a crabby optimist like me, things couldn't be worse. Everywhere you turn, our lives and marriages and morale and government are falling to pieces. So many friends have broken children. The planet does not seem long for this world. Repent. Oh, wait, never mind. I meant help. What I wanted my whole life was relief from pressure, isolation, people suffering, including my own, which was mainly mental, and entire political administrations. That is really all I want now. Besides dealing with standard issue family crisis, heartbreak and mishegas, I feel that I can't stand one single more death in my life. That's too bad because as we speak, I have a cherished 13 year old cat who is near death from lymphoma. I know I won't be able to live without her. This must sound relatively petty to those of you facing the impending loss of people, careers, or retirement savings. But if you are madly in love with your pets, as any rational person is, you know what a loss it will be for both me and my three-year-old grandson, Jax. My cat, Jeannie, has helped raise, raise him, and it will be his first death. I told him that she was sick and tr that the angels were going to take her from us. I tried to make it sound like rather happy news. After all, vultures aren't coming for her or snakes, but he wasn't having any of it. Angels are taking Jeannie away? Yes, because she is old and needs to go, go live in heaven now. He said, I'm mad at the angels. He's mad at death. I'm mad at death too. I've had it. I am existentially sick to death of death and I absolutely cannot stand that a couple of friends may lose their children. I cannot stand that my son's and grandson's lives will hold so much isolation, strife, death, and common yet humiliating skin conditions. But as Kurt Vonnegut put it, welcome to the monkey house. This is a hard planet and we're a vulnerable species. And all I can do is pray, help. When I pray, which I do many times a day, I pray for a lot of things. I ask for health and happiness for my friends and for their children. This is okay to do, to ask God to help them have a sense of peace or for them to feel the love of God. I pray for our leaders to act in the common good or at least the common slightly better. I pray that aid and comfort be rushed to people after catastrophes, natural and man-made. It is also okay, okay to ask that my cat have an easy death. Some of my friend's kids are broken and the kid's parents are living in that. And other friends' marriages are broken. And every family I love has serious problems involving someone's health or finances. But we can be big in prayer and trust that God won't mind if we pray about the cat and Jax's tender heart. Is, go is God going to say, Sorry, we don't have enough for the cat? I don't think so. I ask for help for this planet and for her poor and for the suffering people in my little galaxy. I know even as I pray for help that there will be tremendous compassion, mercy, generosity, companionship, and laughter from other people in the world and from friends, doctors, nurses, hospice people. I also know that life can be devastating and it's still okay to be angry, she uses a more colorful phrase, at God. Mercy schmercy, I always want the kid to live. I can picture God saying, okay, hon, I'll be here when you're done with your list. Then he goes back to knitting new forests or helping less obstreperous, she uses another word, or uh, people, until I hit rock bottom. 
And when I finally do, there may be hope. There's freedom in hitting bottom, in seeing that you won't be able to save or rescue your daughter, her spouse, his parents, or your career. Relief in admitting you've reached the place of great unknown. This is where restoration can begin, because when you're still in the state of trying to fix the unfixable, everything bad is engaged. The chatter of your mind, the tension of your physiology, all the trunks and wheel-ons you carry from the past. It's exhausting, crazy-making. Help. Help us walk through this. Help us come through. It is the first great prayer. I don't pray for God to do th this or that, or for God's sake to knock it off, or for specific outcomes. Well, okay, maybe a little. When my great hero, Arthur Ashe, had had AIDS for quite a while, he said, God's will alone matters. When I played tennis, I never prayed for victory in a match. I will not pray now to be cured of heart disease or AIDS. So I pray, help, hold my friends in your light. I'll finish there in this chapter on praying the prayer, help. I think one thing about this time that we're in is that we all know we need help. It's so easy for us through most of our life to sort of coast along and think like, well, we're going to be, we're all right, you know, and we want to be the ones helping others. We are helping people. We are the ones who, who are in the giving uh, stance. And it is good for us, I think, then to know that this is always true. We are always the ones who need help. But sometimes we have convinced ourselves that no, we are the ones who always give help and we don't need to receive it. But in this time, we cannot hold on to that stance. We cannot hold on to that illusion. We all know we need help. We need help with this virus. And as we've seen this week, we need help learning how to get along with one another, learning how to value people who it is so easy for us, if not to devalue, simply not to look at the ways they have been devalued in our society. And so one of the great things, if we can say that, about hitting bottom in this time together is that we together can admit that we need help. And when we admit that, we know that we may call upon the Lord. We know, as she said, that there's nothing that we can't ask God about. There's nothing that God will run out of mercy for, run out of love for, that God will always be able to help. And so we lift up those who, who need help in a special way now. And we ask, as she later on in the chapter talks, that she prays for her friends that, and for people who are hurting that they may have air and light. And that's what we pray for our world today. And so as, as you are listening to this and as you are thinking about your own life, I invite you to notice the help that you need and to ask for it because it is available. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you promised us help. And we ask you to forgive us for all those times that we thought we didn't need it. And we pray that you will help us as we also give that we may receive so that we may know the joy of both. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. May God be with you and help you.